Genesis 17, verse 15, reads like this. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai, thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name, or her name be. That's meaning princess. And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. And ye, and yea, I will bless her and shall she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born of him that is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah, that is 90 years old, bear? And Abraham said unto God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. Verse 19, And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant. And with his seed after him. Father, we come before you again tonight. We thank you for this opportunity to break the bread of life together. I thank you, Lord, for the songs the chorus played and sang, and I hear it and blessed our hearts with tonight as well. And I thank you for every person sitting on a pew here tonight who chose to be in your house. I just pray tonight, God, that you'd hide me behind the cross that I would not be seen, that my voice would be heard to lift up you and your only begotten Son, whom you said would draw all mankind unto him if he's lifted up. So, Father, we're here to lift up the name of Jesus Christ and God Almighty. I pray that your word would not go out and come back void. And, Father, for everything that's accomplished here tonight, we're going to praise you and thank you for it. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Well, with this little story of Abraham being 100 years old and Sarah being 90 years old, the title tonight is Too Old? With a question mark. Too Old? With a question mark. Now, I thought about that today as I was studying this yesterday and today, and I was thinking about how we've got an older congregation. Amen? We got, I mean, that's just the fact of life, just the way it is. I and mean, that's probably that way in a lot of churches. But many times the devil will tell you and myself and anybody else from the age of 50 on up that you're too old to do this, that, or the other. Now we know that, you know, the, the miracle that he performed with, with Abraham and Sarah, with him being 100 years old and um, it being able to still produce seed and the uh, produce a child and her at 90 years old to be able to conceive a child. We know that normally speaking that that age is out of the question and that's why they fell on their face laughing at God because they knew the physical aspects of their life that that season in their life was behind them. And in 99.9% .9 of the people in America today, that's still the case. But hey, nothing's impossible with God. He has no limits. So I want to look back in the scripture and I got a few things I want to share with us tonight. Verse 15 said, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing her name right before he said she'll be called Sarah. And God said unto Abraham, as for Sarai, thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. And I think about that as God told him what his wife's name was going to be. It reminds me of when uh, God told Joseph and Mary who's, what name Jesus would have. Amen. And he gave John the Baptist his name and as many others, amen, that God has named. And I think about that today, how he's given you and I a new name. Amen. You become a new creature in Christ. You're not the same person you used to be. You used to be a child of the devil. Now you've been turned around and you're a child of the king. And we all have a new name. And we're all of God's children tonight. So Abraham and Sarah laughed. If we look down to the next verse about what God had to say about them bearing a son at their old age. In verse 16, and 
See, he said, I will bless her, talking about Sarah, and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. We need to ask God, as he adds years to our life, we need to ask him to add life to our years. You know, just because we're getting older, just because we're getting wrinkled, just because we're losing our hair, or our hair is turning gray, or losing our steps, and i got a few things to talk about that, that doesn't mean God can't use us today. No matter who you are, we too, just like, uh, just like Abraham and Sarah, grow old. We've been growing old ever since we were born. And we wonder if the Lord can fulfill His promises in us and to us and through us that we read in this book. No doubt, Abraham and Sarah, Sarah never dreamed they'd be having a child at 90 and 100 years old. Amen? That's just out of the question. But then again, God said, I'm not done with you. So that should give everybody hope here tonight to know that you may have given up on yourself. But I got news for you. If he can, uh, he can still cause a 90-year-old woman to conceive and a 100-year-old man to produce seed at 100 years old, he can do anything in our lives today. So don't sit back and believe that lie of the devil that you're too old and you're washed up and you can't do this, that, or the other. All of us can be used of God. We all have a voice. And we need to let our voices be heard. We no longer have status as we get older. What do you mean by that? Basically, to break it down in my terms, the younger generation looks at us as being out of style. Amen? We don't have status in the community. We don't have status. That's what we think in our mind. But what we have that the younger generation don't have, Todd, is experience. Amen. We've been through the valleys. We've been on the mountaintop. We've been in the trenches. Amen. We've, been, uh, we've had all the different things in life that we've been through. And therefore, we have so much more to offer. That's why we should not shut it up in our minds and not share it with this younger generation or even with the older folks. Amen. You need to share what God's blessed you with. I've said many times. When an elder dies, or an old timer, as we call them in the country, out here in the country, if somebody that's got a lot of years on them, been down, got a lot of miles on them, and, and they've been through a lot of, of tough times in their life and seen a lot of changes in their life, when one of those pass away, that's a whole library of knowledge, a wealth of knowledge that we lose. And I don't know about you, but I can look around and see the culture is showing that we're losing that knowledge and that wealth in this time we're living in today. Things that used to be wrong, people don't call them wrong anymore. And things that are right, they don't call them right anymore. And we're losing that wealth of knowledge because those elders are dying away and falling by the wayside. So we don't have status in the community. Our minds are not as sharp as they once were. Can I get an amen? That's what I thought. All of us, none of our minds are as sharp as they used to be. But I think about this. I heard a story not long ago, and I've heard it more than one time of different elders. That there was this elderly lady, Sister Linda, she's in a nursing home, and she, she might remember her family today. She might not, Cotton. Amen. She might remember what she done yesterday, Sylvia. She might not, Brother Robert. But the one thing she never forgot was Scripture. One thing that always stuck in her mind was the Word of God. Yeah, I can't help but to believe that God ordained it that way. We may forget things in our life. We may forget what we ate yesterday. We may forget where we went yesterday. We may even forget family members, but we'll never, ever forget God because He lives inside of us. Amen? He's the one that allows our mind to come and allows our mind to go. He's the one that orders our steps, amen, we've been born again. So I thought that was very amazing how they forget a lot of things about life, but they never forgot the Word of God and God Himself. It's always stayed in your mind. It reminds me of the Scripture that says, train up a child in the way that they should go, and when they're old, they won't depart from it. And when they're old, the Word of God won't depart from us. We can remember that as we get older. As we look back to the scripture, verse 17 says, Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed. Most of us would too. And said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? Question mark. And shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? Meaning bear a child. And Abraham said unto God, Oh, that 
Ishmael might live before thee. And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed. And thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant. And with his seed after him. In other words, he's going to give you a son. And he's going to, he's going to, his covenant is going to be with Isaac's seed right on generation after generation. And we see that today is still happening long after Abraham and Sarah have passed on. Long as, after Isaac has passed on, we're still seeing his seed today just like the promise that God made. So if he can do this for Abraham and Sarah and give them a son, and not only gave them the son, but named the son, and gave his promise to him, and set his covenant upon him, and it's still coming to pass today, he can do things for you and I that we never dreamed of. We're hampered by physical problems that limit our mobility and keep us close to home sometimes. In other words, your steps might not be as strong as they used to be. Your stride not, might not be as good. Your eyesight might be getting dim. Amen. Your hearing might not be as good. Your physical mobility. But the one thing we have is a voice for God. See, you can talk about Jesus Christ if you're sitting on the side of your bed, if you're standing up in the aisle at Walmart, if you're on the job, wherever you go, if you're walking or rolling around in a wheelchair, if you're walking with a walker, amen, it doesn't matter where we are, it doesn't matter about our physical mobility, what matters is whether we still can share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And share what he's done for you and I. So, yeah, all of our steps are getting slower. We can't kick as high as we used to. Or if we do, we're going to pull something in the process. And if you pull it today, it's going to take a long time to get it back right. Y'all know I'm telling you the truth. But that does not stop us from testifying. doesn't change the fact that we can still witness about Jesus Christ and what he's done for us. Amen? And he's done a lot for you and I today. Now, every day we seem to lose more things that we seem to have spent a lifetime acquiring. We seem to lose a lot of things in our life today, physically speaking, amen, from a fleshly standpoint that we want to try to acquire. Nothing wrong with people exercising. That's a good thing. But as you get older, some the, the, your body don't work the same. So these muscle men and women, amen, they may lose muscle. You may uh, got, you know, like to walk and exercise and run, and you may lose that stamina. But not only that, there's a lot of things that we seem to gather as we thought we needed this in life, and we thought we needed this toy, and we thought we needed that toy, we thought we needed all these different things that we thought we needed in the fleshly mind. But as we lose those things because... Lots of things you have today, you can't operate them like you used to. You take a chainsaw, for, exist, uh, for example. You know, just anybody can't run a chainsaw. Amen. You got to have some strength to hold that chainsaw. You got to have some strength. Amen. To be able to, to use that saw and to pick it up. It takes effort. But what I want to remind you of is that you might not can pick the chainsaw up and use it like you used to. Amen. But you can encourage somebody else that can use the saw to do the same. Here's a prime example. Now, back when I was in my, I guess I was in my 30s back then, and Granddaddy uh, Ganey and Dooley Boy was, they sit down and we cut up a big oak tree down there when we lived beside my granddaddy. And, um, they couldn't sling that maul or that axe like I could because they were stricken in years. But I tell you what they done. Hey, they found a, a boy in me, a young man in me that could swing one. And I tell you, they like to work me to death. They sat on, they had a, a they picked two of the, a piece of wood up, Robert. They, one was sitting here, I'll never forget it. One sitting here, and I was in the middle. And granddaddy would sit one up, and I'd bust that one. And Dooley Boy sit one up, and I'd bust that one. And they just sit there, chewing the fat, just talking about whatever, and just kept putting them up, and I'm sweating like a bull. But you know what? They couldn't swing the axe, but they had somebody there that could swing the axe at the time. Now I'm starting to look for somebody that can swing that axe. Amen? As you get older, you can't do what you used to do. And I'm telling you this for a reason. I'm not telling you this to belittle you. You've got to realize in your mind that just because you can't physically do what you used to do does not mean you're not important to somebody. Everybody's important. Amen? Everybody has something to offer. So I'm just telling you today, when you, if you look at it this way, as you get older, you go from being the hired hand to the supervisor. 
to the one that says, get this and get that and go yonder. Amen. So really your job gets easy. You still got authority to be able to tell people to go do this and to go do that. So just like with Sarah, amen, and Abraham, they thought their years were over with making a baby or raising a child, but God saw differently. I want to, this needs to be preached to as many elderly people or older people that we can because so many of them today think they're washed up and they're no good to society anymore. Just because you can't kick as high, I remember uh, J.D. Bryant used to say, I'm still kicking, just not quite as high as I used to could kick. And that's the way it is with all of us. We got breath in our body. Do something for the Lord. And see, don't he bless you. We ask ourselves the question, trying to make sense of why we see the things in our body, our physical body, diminishing. Why do we see not only that, and I'm going to tell you something else that really bothers us sometimes. And if you say it doesn't bother you, then you need to see me at the church. I need to see what your secrets are. But let me tell you something. Not only do we start seeing our physical ability diminish when our eyesight and our ears and our mobility and our, uh, our mind slipping and forgetting things, but also the things in our life I believe that tried, the devil tried to use against us that diminishing around us is our family and friends that are passing away. Those are, that are diminishing. And you know, I stop and think about things and when I used to have all my grandparents here and my mama here, I still got my daddy here, but I used to have all my family that was close to it. I, no matter what was going on in my life, I could run to this one and run to that one, but guess what? Those people are slowly diminishing away, and now I got my family coming to me for the same reasons I used to run to them. In other words, we're becoming those people that we used to depend on so much in life but we got to remember that God has kept us here for a reason. He's kept us here to do what He's called us to do. And the next thing I wanted to talk about is He can still use us in our older years. But the big difference is, the key to that is, we first must make ourselves available. Amen. What do you mean, preacher? Here's what I mean. You can't be made available to do what God's called you, created you to do, equipped you to do, by sitting on the couch all the time. I mean, you can't do what God's called you to do by, woe is me, I can't do this, I can't see. Let me tell you, I'm sure Jesus probably couldn't see when he toted that cross up Calvary's hill for the blood and the sweat that ran down his eyes that day, but he kept on walking, amen. He kept on putting one foot in front of the other. He took everything, y'all, that the devil had at that whipping post. Everything he had. But he didn't quit. He was only 33 and a half years old, but yet he still kept going. He might have, he might have been a young man, fleshly speaking and physically speaking, but he was beat down to a pulp that probably equivalent to 150 years old because of the strength that he didn't have, physically speaking. But what he did have was the strength from his heavenly Father. And I'm going to tell you here today, I don't care if you're 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 years old. If you've been born again, the Bible says, greater is he that's in me than he that's within this world. So I'm telling you today, if you've been born again, you've got greater strength than you think you have. You just need to make yourself available. Let him use you. And he'll, you'll be surprised how many other people need to hear what you have to say. But if we see these things diminishing around us, or another thing, I'm about done, Cord, believe it or not, if you want to come back to the music. If we see these things diminishing around us, and we dwell on them, like I said earlier, about losing family members, losing our strength, losing our vision, losing our hearing, losing our mind, whatever it may be, if we try to take care of this kin and deal with it on our own, we will not overcome this thing. But if you rely, rely on the strength of God, it would depend on Jesus Christ, God's only begotten Son, God Almighty, our Heavenly Father, and the Holy Ghost, amen, the Trinity, the all in one, then we can make it through the next day. We can make it to the next mile. We can make it around the next turn. But first of all, we must trust Him with everything we do. As I said earlier, God is able to do more with us than we could ever imagine. See, I keep going back to the same point. Abraham fell on his face and laughed when God Almighty told him, your wife that's 90 years old is going to have a son from you. That's funny. That would have been funny to anybody. But how about this? 
How about if I could look around and start with my dad and go all around to everybody in this room, whether you're old or young or middle-aged, to tell you, you still got work to do. God created you in His image and His likeness, so don't think just because your eyes are getting dim, don't think just because your hearing's getting a little bad, don't think just because you can't remember if you brushed your teeth when you got up in the morning after you go to work, amen. Don't tell me that God can't use you just because these things happen. He can still put words in your mouth to encourage other people. No matter how old you may be or how slow you may be. You know, it's not always the fastest that wins the race. It's the slow and steady pace that gets you there. But you always need to remember that as you get older in life. I'm telling you, there's a lot of people, because they're older physically speaking, think they have nothing to offer, but they're wrong. Is anything too hard for God? No, of course not. We're never too old, as I said earlier, the only thing we got to do is to make ourselves available for Him to use you. Amen? Make yourself available. Let me tell you something else. When you make yourself available, do what you do for God and God alone. He will bless you. There are many things that many people do and they never, nobody ever sees the things that they do, but God sees them. See, I, I do what I do for God. I don't come here and preach the gospel for y'all. I don't. I come and preach the gospel because God says so, and I hope y'all reap the benefits because of what God's given me to preach. Amen. I don't get up and say what I say for the people. I do what I do for God, and He'll bless me. Hey, we're going to go through some tough times. He never said it'd be a bed of roses. He never said what, what you wouldn't have to go through, but He also said, but He did say, you won't have to go through it alone. And as we look around in life today, I know it weighs on a lot of you, my, my mind, and y'all that are older than me, I'm sure it weighs on your mind about death may be closer than you realize. I assure you it's closer than it was when we were 20 years old. Matter of fact, it's closer to now, now than it was when we started at 7 o'clock tonight. See, that doesn't change the fact that if you've been born again, death don't matter. Amen. If you've been born again, age don't matter. If you've been born again, nothing else matters except that you're going to spend eternity with Jesus Christ. Robin didn't share something with me just on the way to church about the queen. You know, I don't, you know, from what I've seen and, and heard about her, she seemed to be a God-fearing lady. And I uh, uh, read some scripture today that uh, Casey sent to me that was heard on every continent around the world because even though she had already passed away, the scripture was read and people heard the gospel that Jesus Christ is the, the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes into the Father but by me, but by him. But Robert said she remembered, the queen said she hoped that the rapture took place before she died while she was still living, where she could take her crown and lay it at the feet of Jesus. I don't know about y'all, I'm sweating like a bull, but I got chilly bumps from one end to the other. I'm gonna tell you right now, those Holy Ghost bumps, they were for a reason because I'm going to tell you right now, she was, a, she was crowned the king. You know, she was, the, she was the queen for 70 years. That's a long time. That woman with the authority she had knew that it was a greater king of kings. And she was going to lay her temporary crown at the feet of Jesus and receive her eternal crown. Let me tell you something. You're not too old. Too old? What do you mean I'm too old? No, you're not. And I don't care if I'm talking to 50-year-old people or 90-year-old people or everybody in between. None of you are too old to do something for the Lord. None of you are too old to say, you know what, I'm, I will just quit. I can't do anything anymore. That's not true. You can do more than you can do. Why? Because Christ strengthens you. Who cares whether you got status in the community? As long as you got status with the Messiah. See, there's going to be a place in heaven one day that when we get there, there'll be no more death, no more pain, no more sorrow. We'll all be praising God around the throne. And you know what? The world don't get that. The world don't understand why we believe what we believe. Amen. But guess what? I pray that they'll get it right. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And I can't wait the one day when he hands me my robe and crown, Sylvia. When he says, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter into the glories of God. And guess what? When we get to heaven, we're going to all be equal. 
It doesn't matter if it's the Queen of England. It doesn't matter if the President of the United States, amen. It doesn't matter if it's the greatest evangelist or preacher ever walked the face of the earth, amen. From the Charles Spurgeons down to the Billy Grahams and everybody in between, we're going to all be equal in the eyes of God around the throne of God one day. It doesn't matter what color our skin is down here. We're going to all be one up there. It doesn't matter whether it's rich or poor down here. We're going to all be wealthy up there. Why? Because the streets of gold, walls of jasper, gates of pearl, and Jesus Christ will be in our midst. You're talking about a heavenly choir. I can't wait to sing in that choir. I can't care a tune in the bucket most of the time, but I tell you, it won't matter up there. I want to encourage you tonight with your heads bowed and eyes closed, praying to the Messiah. Let the devil know you're not too old. Let the devil know I'm still strong enough with the Spirit of God in me to give you a black eye. I'm still strong enough, spiritually speaking, amen, to cause the devil some agony and pain and heartache. I pray that we do just that from the rest of this day for the rest of our lives. So with this altar being open tonight, I give you an open invitation. If you'd like to come and pray, I don't care if your steps are slow, your stride is short. I don't care how long it takes you to get here. We're going to wait on you. Amen. If you want to come and praise God and thank Him around this altar tonight, I encourage you to do just that. You know how you want to get to make the devil mad? Come to this altar tonight. Raise your hands in prayer and talk to the Messiah and let Him realize, amen, that as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, O Satan. We will serve the Lord, O Lucifer. We will serve the Lord because of who He is. Our age has nothing to do with where we're going to spend eternity. Our age only declares that we're closer now to crossing Jordan than we used to be. But to be absent from the old body means to be present with the Lord. So I encourage somebody tonight to grab Jesus around his neck. Grab him around his waist. Grab him around his feet tonight. Pour your heart out to him. And see, won't he equip you to what he wants you to do, with what he wants you to do. See, won't he lead you and guide you and give you a spring in your step and a song in your mouth. Let him use you, young and old. Let him use you, no matter where you come from or where you're going. Let him use you. Father, I thank you for this congregation tonight. And I pray, oh God, that you reach down to the windows and the portals of heaven and touch each and every person, every one of us, no matter what age we may be. But maybe especially those that are stricken in years and some that are older in here tonight. I pray you give them a confidence back that they may have lost because of their age. Because of the aches and pains that they're losing. Amen. Maybe the, the peacefulness that they have in their physical body. But God, we also know that you'll be with us to help ease that pain. That you'll be with us to help us to see the things we need to see. To hear the things we need to hear. To be able to feel and touch the things that we need to touch in life today. Father, if you can do what you've done for Abraham and Sarah, surely you can touch each and every one of us in this place today. Too old? I don't think so. We've got breath in our body. And if you live the life that God's called you to live, you'll leave a legacy behind it. Even when your body's in the grave, you'll still be sharing the gospel because of your legacy, because of who you are, whom you belong to. And others will remember you for the legacy you left behind. Young middle-aged or old. Father, we praise you. We thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen.